they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm poking them down. We turn the spots no frown. Can't hop out, then we clear them. What's going on, y'all? It's Laura K. We here at Talk of the Town. And who's in the town today? Kid Flash, you know the vibes. Period. So to get us started, we want to get a little bit familiar. So we're going to play a game of rapid fire questions, okay? Okay. So I'm going to say the question, you answer as fast as you can. Let's do it. All right. What's your favorite cartoon of all time? Um, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. What's your biggest pet peeve? Uh, Stink Breath. What's the best hip-hop beat of all time? Um, Travis Scott's uh, Ed Drake's, that was that song? Uh, Sycamore? Sycamore, yeah. Sycamore, okay. Song. What's your sign? Taurus. Mm. All right. all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> What's your favorite curse word? Um, my nigga. <laughs> if, I mean, if okay. <laughs> okay. What's a one hit? Well, who's a one hit wonder who should have went further? Um. Hmm. What's that? What's that one girl name? Oh shit! What's she saying? Damn. I, I conceded. I got Remy Ma is not a one hit no, wonder. No, 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 I don't think it's conceded. Damn, what's the damn? What's that shit? Nah, it's um the milkshake song. Khalees? Yeah. Khalees is not a one hit wonder either, but I'm gonna give that to you. She had, she had that's the only song I know of. She had bossy. Cause I'm bossy. That was I'm her. The one that, oh yeah. shit! I didn't know that. Period. So on death row, what's your last meal? Um, pizza. A word you had trouble spelling as a child. Damn. Restaurant, Wednesday, beautiful. Oh, um, uh, porcupine. Gorgeous. Um, gorgeous. Okay. What's the best album artwork of all time? Um, the album artwork I did for City of Gods. Okay. Maybe I should specify. Not by you. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Kid Cudi's album, The Man on the Moon. Okay. The one. And the next one, the best artwork you've done. Best artwork I've done, uh, either City of Gods, Hold On, or Sleepy for President. Okay, or, he gave us three. Or last one. Um, <laughs> Four. Proud of Me Now by Chef G. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. And the last one, give us an unpopular opinion. Um, an unpopular opinion is that you're supposed to keep your, damn, I don't know. <laughs> You don't got no unpopular, like TV uh, shows, music, just oh, living life, okay, like anything. Okay. I, I just any it, unpopular okay, opinion. Unpopular opinion. Um, that Curse the Cowardly Dog was a scary show. I don't think that show was scary. I thought that show was hilarious. Okay. Yeah. So you think it's funny. It's not I think scary. It's hilarious. Okay, period. Mm -hmm. So let's start from the very beginning. Where are you from? I am from East Orange, New Jersey. I did not get that from you. Mm -hmm. So how long did you ever move to New York? Yeah, I used to live out in New York um, back in co my college days around like 2017 to 2019. Mm. But I have a lot of family out in Brooklyn and all over the boroughs and stuff like that. So I was kind of raised out here. Mm -hmm. So I was born in Jersey, but I was raised out in New York because I was here like every single weekend, summer of mm -hmm. my whole life. So I, that's why I kind of jack. I'm from both. Got it. So what impact mm -hmm. do you feel like where you came from? Have to, had, what impact do you feel like it has on your work? I feel everything like, you do. Yeah, I feel like the culture of just New York and just the scenery, the vibes, everything that goes on out here, kind of like, you know, it, it translates through my music because I mean, not my music, excuse me, the the artwork and and even my music too, mm -hmm. um, because it's just like a different vibe out here. You know, Jersey is very very quiet, so mm -hmm. out here in, in the city, it's a lot more lively, it's a lot more expressive, it's a lot more color. So mm -hmm. I take those elements and I incorporate it into everything that I do. So I feel like that aspect kind of made me the artist that I am right now. Y'all see he tripped up because he is a man of many, many hats. Tell yeah. him how many hats you got. I can't Sweet. even keep count. So I do cover art. I do animation. I do producing. I do rapping. I do <laughs> editing, videography, photography. Um, I do goddamn anything creative under the sun. If, I, if it's creative, I do it. Period. So mm -hmm. I really want to dive into the music part first. Mm -hmm. So you said that you watched a lot of other producers to like really get a feel for the craft and develop your signature sound. Absolutely. So who are you watching and what did you like about them? Um, so I was watching Flip De Niro for one. That was one of my mm. first influences because that's actually my boy. I know him like in person. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just being in the studio with him a few times, just seeing him, you know, really work. 
um, even in his in home studio, it just kind of inspired me. You know, we had a, a, a real heart to heart talk on just like how this thing works, how to do it the proper way, beat selection, what you say, the cadence of your flow. Period. So he really taught me the ins and outs of it. And he was one of my main influences for my music. And then, you know, just being in the studio with, you know, with other other, other artists like Sleepy Hollow, Chef G, Lil TJ and, you know, names like that. Mm -hmm. It kind of just you know, gave me an insight on what it is to be a real rapper in this, in this industry. So those also kind of like played a real role in my, my career. Okay, so I definitely wanted to talk about them because mm -hmm. I heard that Chef G bought you the computer. Yeah. And I know like you be with Corey and you always mention Flip. Like every mm -hmm. interview that I saw of you, you're very, you're like, you're always bigging somebody up. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you very much go against the whole New York stereotype of like, New Yorkers don't stick together and that's why we don't go as far. So what is your opinion on that? Do you feel like that's still true or do you feel like you, New York is uniting? I feel like it is still a little bit diverse and separated. I feel like a lot of people do need to come together more. Mm -hmm. It's always like, oh, I'm the king of New York. I'm the king of New York. I'm the king of New York. It's like, why we can't be the kings of New York, why we can't be like ruling this empire together. Cause I feel like, you know, if you put that pedestal on one person, it's gonna like dim the light on somebody else who might be having the same buzz or bigger than someone else. So I feel like, you know, we shouldn't be putting each other down. We should be trying to uplift each other. Cause if you look at the Atlanta scene or the Memphis scene, mm -hmm. everybody's kind of like helping each other in the, you know, on the ladder type shit. But mm -hmm. when it comes to New York, it's like crabs in the barrel type shit. Like everybody, one person go up and then they try to pull that person down with some beef or mm -hmm. this song or some shit like that. I feel like it's, it's unfair because everybody has their own separate talent. I feel like everybody could kind of bounce off each other with that energy, but right. everybody just want the spotlight for themselves. And I get it, but it's just like, it's not necessary. Okay, so I want to offer some pushback mm -hmm. that I just thought of while you said this. Mm -hmm. So, I feel like, given that New York started hip-hop, yeah. I think rap was always a very, very competitive thing. Mm -hmm. So, like, even when you go back, like, Jay-Z always felt like he was the best. Biggie always felt like he was the best. Nas always felt like he was the best, even though they were coexisting around, like, similar times. Yeah. Um, well, not so much Biggie, but you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, so, do you feel like, like, I think that's just New York. Yeah. So do you think that there's a healthy way to do it? Because I do feel like you should think you're the best at the shit. Mm -hmm. But like you said, where it gets in is tearing people down part. Type shit. And I feel like, yeah, like, you know, since, like you said, New York is like the epitome of rap. Like it started mm -hmm. here. So it's like, mm -hmm. I understand. But at the same time, like, I feel like rappers nowadays, they just kind of get too caught up with the street life and mix mm. that with everything because just because this rapper might be from a different hood or a different set or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be, they don't feel like they should rock with this person or whatever, whatever. And I get it, but it's just like once you once you in that rap scene and once you in that lane, mm -hmm. all that street shit kind of should be put to the side. Like it's that professional. Shit, man. Keep it professional. Like right. you don't gotta mess with my crew and my people's like on that. And I get it, but. Mm -hmm. In the music lane, if I know me and you can make a smash hit for the for the for the towns, mm -hmm. let's do it. But let's just keep it that you get your percentages, you handle the business the way it's supposed to be handled, and just keep it that way. Like nobody get screwed over on any side. It's always right. peace. I feel like that's the way to go about it. But pride and street shit just kind of get a little too mixed in it. So it is what it is. But you know what I'm saying? It, I just feel like if if they put that little thought to it, maybe we could get some hits from some people that you yeah. never thought would collab ever. But it just depends. So speaking of collabs, mm -hmm. let's say you just made the best beat of your career. Right. You're playing DJ Khaled right now. So <laughs> pick three artists mm -hmm. to fit. Like you are building a smash. Mm -hmm. Who you putting on your song? I'm putting... Damn, I'm putting... Uh, I know so many people that I could put on this, but if I had to choose... You trying to make this like... You trying to take it out of here. I'm putting Sleeping Your Chef for a fact. Okay. I'm putting TJ. I could also switch it up and put like a Favi, a K Flock. I put my son Corey St. Rose in there. Shout out okay. Corey St. Rose for me because he 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 got some heat. Um, I also, if I want to go on the uh, like R and B love kind of kind of direction, I put my son Flip Flip De Niro, uh, Ji. That's my boy too. Mm. And I put um, hmm, so I put. I put Stunna Gambino too, cause he 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 definitely fit the vibe of like a flip. The three of them would go crazy. Would go I'm crazy. not gonna lie. Stunna Gambino flipping Ji would yeah. go. Oh, you might have to make that happen. You may have to make it happen. I already you know what I'm saying got some things in the works, but you Ooh. never. Yeah, I can't speak too much on that though. Exclusive. Hello. Now here's my issue. Mm. Where's the women? Where's the women? Where's oh, the well, women? 
I unfortunately I haven't had the chance to work with any of the upcoming okay. female artists. I would love to. So mm-hmm. if, if y'all see this, tap in. Let's let's get something going. But unfortunately, I haven't had the, you know pleasure of working with one of these uh, upcoming female artists but I'm, I'm definitely open to it so if they want to work we could work you know what i'm saying My do girls. you have any in particular like oh i've been hearing her music and she's fire um i've been hearing a lot about kenzo b i feel like her flow is Period. crazy definitely um i've been hearing a lot about well ice spice already out here so she she way past it <laughs> she way past <laughs> going <laughs> but um i hear i hear about uh What's her name? Maya Maya the Dawn or something? Yeah. Maya the Dawn, yeah. yeah. Maya the Dawn. That's she, the one that made the, Telfy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's definitely fire. Yeah, she's tough. And um, yeah, uh there's a couple more, but I'm I'm kinda like drawing a blank. But those are the main ones that I'm kinda like, you know, just hearing about all the time, seeing even y'all posts. So, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I just I just okay, gravitate towards period. that. Period. So what are your goals as an artist and or producer? Um, I really just wanna get either a gold or platinum plaque from producing the art because I, mm. I I'm one of the first people to get a platinum and gold plaque for my just artwork alone. Period. So I wouldn't want to do it. Say it louder for the people in the back. You feel me? It's first first black entrepreneur artist illustrator to do this multi platinum cover artist thing. Period. But you already know the vibes. That's that on that. Yeah dig. So um <laughs> I'm just trying to, you know, produce a hit that I also produced the beat and did the cover art for. Like that's Ooh. my main goal. Like to do uh two for one. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So would you get two plaques? Or that's just one plaque? Probably just one. One? Yeah. Okay. We're not greedy. So I heard you say that cover art matters as much as the producers. Mm-hmm. How so? Um, because it's the it's it's a requirement at the end of the day. Like you cannot put out a song, you can't upload the song, what whatever distro you have, mm-hmm. you can't put it out without the cover art. And that's just the same uh, analogy I can say is like you can't make the song without the beat. Right. So it has the same level of importance. Of, of of the producer because I feel like when you when you have a, a good cover art and something that is tied to the song itself, it adds a level of value, a, a level of uh, attractability to it. So that mm. makes people want to gravitate towards the song more because when you see anybody about to drop a song, they drop that cover or they drop the right. little animation. Right. They don't drop the beat or the song. They drop the animation or the cover art. Mm-hmm. And that's where people like me come in. You know what I'm saying? So I need people and these artists and these labels to put some respect on us designers and really give us our credit. Absolutely. Because we don't, they don't tag us. They don't credit us in the, in the bios or nothing like that. Right. In the blogs, none of that. And everybody's like, yo, who did this? In the comments, who did that? Who did this? And everybody's just like, we don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody exactly. knows. And some some people that I know go crazy for the cover art. Not even just myself. Like other people take like weeks to do cover art. Mm. Hand paint them. Some some people I know like actually paint the physical thing and then take a picture of it, and edit it. Oh from wow! That. Like they like make it a physical hard copy. You could just like give to the artist type shit. So it's like when you doing That's things tough. like that. Yeah. So like when you doing things like that, you gotta get recognized. You gotta. Have that, have that, you know, recognition because at the end of the day, you put in time and hard work into that. Mm-hmm. So that's one of my main goals as an artist myself in that lane is to shed light on these people and allow them to kind of use my platform or use my voice to kind of speak up for themselves. So, because hey, a lot of us artists, that. you know, they don't speak up because they feel like they don't have the right to or they don't have the the voice. The voice is not they, loud yeah, enough. Yeah, voice right. not loud enough type shit. So I, I feel like my voice is very loud. So Period. I'm gonna use my voice and let them know. So that's, that's Taurus yeah. shit right there. You, you did so <laughs> big Taurus energy. So especially in like today's time, because yeah. when I first heard you say that the artwork was as important as producing, I was like, hmm. <laughs> but once I heard you explain it, I'm like, that is so true because social media is just so important and artists dropping. And like you said, that is the first thing you see. Mm. So one cover I wanted to ask you about was how did you feel about the certified lover boy? cover because i feel like that one kind of threw us for a loop especially mm-hmm. after we saw the other one with the the yeah. heart in the head we was like that was fire and then he gave us emojis and we was all like right and i feel like with that i it's like a it's like a conceptual thing like it's okay. not more for the art it's more for the, the concept the reason behind it because okay you know who drake is he's right. very much a person who probably got mad women pregnant and then outside. made them you know what i'm saying so outside yeah for real, for real. <laughs> so like it's more for that uh, aesthetic of it it's more for like the meaning behind it rather than the artwork itself and that's what i feel like a lot of people don't really realize that mm. it's not just art it's more 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 times when you see art like that it has a meaning behind it mm. so it's up to you as a viewer to kind of understand that meaning based off the music right so i feel like him doing that and uh shout out my boys for me to actually because he did the 
animation for that artwork. Uh, too. Really? So shout out, shout out for me, X. Period. That's my guy. But um, yeah, like he he's one of the few artists that really helped and capture that reasoning, that meaning for it when he was like rubbing their belly and shit like mm-hmm. that. It had all meanings. It's just like subliminal for you to understand. So I feel like mm-hmm. it was it was a it was a good concept. It was very kind of like. Not to say uh, like rushed, but it was like you. I know what he was trying to do, but I feel like it was different ways he could have conceptualized that. Okay. But for what he did, though, yeah, I get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, do you feel like the artwork has an impact on if an album becomes a classic? Absolutely, because it, once you have timeless music, you have to have timeless artwork to Absolutely. go with it. At the end of the day, because when you remember a song that's gonna keep playing. 30 years from now, right. you don't want to have no blank white or black cover art or something. Oh, that one that's no, whack. You know what I'm saying? It's just whack. That's yeah. just whack in general. Like You want to have something that could be like, yo, I remember when he dropped this. Right. I was hyped for this. The art just embodies everything that he's saying in these tracks and in this in this music. So I feel like they go hand in hand. Absolutely. like It's, it's no question about it. I agree. Mm-hmm. So for the people that don't know, I want you to list some of the artworks that you've done thus far, because I need y'all to know what he's saying is credited. Okay, it's me. it's this is a credible source. So let's let's list again. Let's. All right. So my first ever major cover art was for Lil TJ's uh, brothers. Then after that, I did Hold On. I did Goat. I did Resume. I did Not in the Mood. I did mm. In My Head. I did shit. Uh, Chef G and Sleepy Hollows, Sleepy for President. I did uh, One and Only. I did um, uh, The Black House, also by Sleepy. I did Proud of Me Now. I did Tiptoe. That was one of my Ooh. favorites. Yeah. yeah. Um, I did Shake It, Cardi B, K Flock, all of them. Um, that did, one was too tough. Yeah, that was crazy. That too was tough. actually the first time one of my cover arts was on a billboard in Times Square. That shit was mm, nuts. How did that feel? That was nuts. Like, and it happened two days before my birthday. Cause Ooh. my birthday four twenty. Okay, so, you feel me? Wow. Yeah. So Billboard I, and then four twenty. I'm jacking it. Like that shit was a crazy year last year. So and then not only that, but they had posters literally all over the city, all over mm-hmm. the Bronx, with just my artwork. I was like, nah, I just did this like last night on my iPad, and that shit is <laughs> everywhere across the city. So that shit was like, wow, that's wow. really me right there. So um, yeah, uh, I did so many more. I did Company by Ji. I did. Um, the list really just goes yeah, it's just on. Going like on. That's, did, that's oh, Flip the Narrow. I did jump off of Flip the Narrow. Shout out my boy Flip. Shout out Flip. Um, damn, it's just so many, it's just so many classics, so many hits. Yeah. Um, I did City of Gods by Five Year Foreign. That was one of my biggest ones um, of of last year. Um, and I think it's interesting because I think they're all different. Mm-hmm. Like I saw you say in the interview that like. Sometimes you can see an artwork and you're like, oh, so-and-so did that. But yeah. you would never know that Flash did it because they're all different. And yeah. I totally, once you started listing them, mm-hmm. I totally understood what you meant. Like, everything is that, like, City of Gods is a whole complete different vibe from Shake It. Exactly. So it's the diversity for me. Thank you. And I appreciate that because, you know, I I feel like a lot of artists nowadays have a particular style. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's not to knock that because, you know, it's dope. That's how you get people to recognize who you are. Yeah. Like, and it's, it's super dope, but at the same time, like, I, I just felt like me, I didn't ever want every, anybody to know it was just only me. I, did, I had this one style because I'm not a one-trick pony. I don't just do cartoons. I don't yeah. just do that tune shit. Like, I do mad different styles. I could paint you a real portrait if I felt like it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm just that versatile, so I want that to translate to my artwork. And a lot of people kind of notice that now, like, yo... I know Flash did that. That's just yeah. his shading style. That's just the way he draws it. Oh, so wow. That's people nice. started recognizing, I was like, oh, crap. Like, that, that's, that's pretty fire. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> shout out to fans. Period. So, what is your creative process when mm-hmm. you do artwork? Especially being that they're all so different. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, I just kind of go based off what the either the A&R or the managers or the labels just give me. Like, they really just don't give me a lot of time either, too. Like, most of these covers, like City of Gods, I did that in two hours, believe it or not. Mm. Like I literally got a call That's from my, tough for, Yeah so the senior vice president of A&R Is at Columbia Records Lou uh, okay. Shout out Lou You know what I mean He hit me up He's like yo bro I got this big song for Favi I can't really tell you who's on it But like I got a teddy bear emoji A piano keys emoji And a snowflake emoji Do something I would've been You got lost. two hours I'd've I been said. stumped I was stumped for like 30 <laughs> minutes I'm not gonna lie 
And then I made like two versions. They was kind of rock, like rocking with it, but then it was like, mm, let's try something else. Then he sent okay. me a picture of T Dot because he, I guess they wanted to make it like a, a tribute piece. Rest in peace, T Dot, by the way. Uh, T-Dot. You feel me? And from there, I just kind of like, well, the pose he was in with like the you know the little dance move he was doing the woo walk, mm-hmm. and I was like, yo, this kind of remind me of like a Statue of Liberty kind of thing because he was standing like on a speaker, mm-hmm. and I was like, yo, I could I could kind of flip this. So once that once he sent me that, that gave me that idea. And then I just made it, you know, into something incorporating these elements of the emojis and then right. it became the cover. So I feel like they don't really give me a lot. It's just really up to my creative direction to make these things come to life. And I'm not going to lie. I pulled a lot of crazy cover outs out the dome just mm. off just thinking creative. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I don't even know or I can't even really, really like explain how it came to be. It just in the moment, like, you know, you got something that's due in like two hours or three hours or however long the time gotta bust is. that paper out got it you gotta yep. just kind of just start doing shit like yep. your mind just start going and I'm a very like another reason why people call me flash is because I'm a, a very quick thinker a, a fast thinker so like when Period. I when I get it I'm just going mm-hmm. I could make like probably five drafts in like the first 30 minutes Psh. And it's that's like, insane. Yeah, <laughs> like drawing is so tedious. Mm-hmm. So that's crazy, right? And you know, I've been doing drawing for like over 12, 13 years. So it's mm-hmm. like it's second nature to me now. But I bet you, if I was like new to it, mm-hmm. I'd be struggling, od. But luckily, through hard work, practice, and just repetitiveness, you know, what I'm saying consistency, I just was able to like kind of make it second nature and allow myself to like really do these things at right. a high level in a quick amount of time. So. Right. I feel like that's also what plays a part. I love that because I can't draw a stick figure. I tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, everybody say that to me. Like I'm such a, I know my strengths and I know my weaknesses. Mm-hmm. I'm such a terrible drawer, seriously. So have you ever done artwork for a song that you didn't like? Um, It would more so be for like the other clients that I got. Like, <clears throat> excuse me, like the, the clients that are not really in the limelight so to say like just more like sometimes I just do it because I want to believe in them but I don't really hear the music most of the time believe Mm. it or not like I don't hear the music until it comes out and then I'm like ooh yeah that's a little so how do people I know they gave you the emojis Mm. so if you're not hearing a song like are they telling you like okay this is the concept or yeah so sometimes either they come with the concept they tell me the song title okay or they just kind of like do a mixture of both like it's called The Dark Room and either they just be like, yo, go off that title, mm-hmm. or they be like, yo, I want to be sitting in a chair in a dark room and it's just shadows. And now from that description, I got to bring it to life. You know what I'm saying? So, wow. Excuse me. Um, it's just like one of those things where you kind of got to just use the minimal amount of information they give you and kind of just make something with it. Mm. And then every time they expect it to be something fire or expect it to be something that they want. And I can honestly say... For the most part, I say probably like ninety nine percent of the time, I get it on the head, like hit the hammer on the head, like one time. Ooh. Like I don't even all have hits, to do, no misses. You dig? So it's True. very like very much a very small margin for error. Like it'd be yeah. like yo, move this up like one one bit or like you know what I'm saying, make the text a different tiny stuff, font. like tiny stuff. But right. for the most part, yeah, like it's always a hit. Oh, I know that's right. So your talents also go into cartoons. He yeah. does cartoons. So I mm-hmm. want to play another game with you. Okay. We are going to do cartoon trivia. Ooh. Okay. So we're going to see it. how much you really tapped into the cartoons. Let's get it. All right. First question. Name the Powerpuff Girls. Um, Bubbles, Blossom, and Buttercup. What was the name of the Rugrats spinoff? Uh, all Grown Up. How many days of summer vacation are there on Phineas of Herb? There's 104 days of summer vacation. <laughs> and school comes along just to end that. <laughs> That's how I was feeling during um quarantine. Honestly, yeah. yeah. That shit a blow. <laughs> Never oh ending. God. Who got their own spinoff from Family Guy? Cleveland Brown. Okay. All right. Those are the easy questions. Mm-hmm. So let's 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 Just amp it up, up a little bit. Eyes. All right. Codename Kids Next Door follow how many kids? Five. How old were they? You said how old were they? Mm-hmm. Their ages? Like uh, How old were they? They all the same age. I think they was all like either 10 or 11, maybe. What's your final answer? I want to say 11. 10. It was 10? Ah, yeah. <laughs> I knew it was 10. What 10. year did SpongeBob come out? Um, I think it was 1999. All right, period. What is the longest running American cartoon? The Simpsons. Damn, why everybody know that? I asked my friend that and she got that <laughs> off rip. I had to Google that. Y'all knew that? Yeah, I knew that. Oh, fuck you I said, When you're an animator, you got to know these things. All right. What number experiment is Stitch from Lilo and Stitch? Ooh, and that's crazy because I dead know that shit. Ah, 
Um, I might get this wrong though, but it might. I think he was like 12, 12 80 something or 12, some some shit like that. What's Damn. the final answer? Let's lock it in. Uh uh-uh, uh, I know you're not whispering over there. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I actually, that one I actually do not know. I don't. You know cannot that. put that on a test. I, all right, so I say it. Seven twenty. Seven twenty. No, it gave six twenty six. Close. Spell Looney Tunes. L O O N E Y T U N E S. Okay. All right. I don't know who dropped the ball over there and didn't put T O O N S, <laughs> but that was terrible. Yeah. Number 10, what does Helga from Hey Arnold hide in her bedroom closet? Like a whole mural and diary for Arnold because she's in love with that man. Period. Mm-hmm. What school do the kids from South Park attend? You know, I actually wasn't a real South Park watcher, but I know the town. What damn, what town is that? Nah. No, no, no. What school did they What attend? school? Yeah, I don't know that one. I ain't gonna lie. I don't Let's watch, go. I don't watch South Park. Wild guess. I don't know. South Park High? South Park Elementary. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah. See? Look at that. All right. <laughs> and the last one mm-hmm. on the Proud family, our Roka grants Penny some wishes. Name mm-hmm. one of the wishes. Run that question one more time. From the Proud family, mm-hmm. our Roka, that's the weather guy. Oh, yeah. He yeah, granted yeah. Penny <laughs> some wishes. Kelly? What? You said our, our Roka, my fault. I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, name one of the wishes that our Roka granted Penny. See the proud family in so long. That's oh. incredible. Um, um they done had a whole popping ass spinoff and everything. How you didn't see it? Well, I seen I seen parts of the spinoff about or really you just remember the Proud Family movie with the peanuts. That shit was fire. But I started to ask you about the peanuts too. Ah, uh, you see, you should ask me about that one. Um, damn, one of the wishes to find a boyfriend? I don't know. No. Not he that. granted her. One of them, she wished for her parents to be gone. Oh, Remember? that episode. Oh, shit. But I then another one, she wished for BB and Cece to be older. Be older, yeah. And then they got older and then they, she, mm-hmm. she took was her bad, like, the last. Uh, Word, yeah, she I was hating. Yeah, she was hating because she wasn't the <laughs> star star kid no more. Exactly. I did remember that. Okay, yeah. I think you got like 10 out of 12, yeah, right? Yeah. 9 out of 12. I think you did pretty close, good, pretty period. Close, close, yeah. All right, you know your cartoons. Mm-hmm. So, cartoons. Talk to me about the flies. Ooh, that's my Tell us what the flies right is about. So the flies is a, a funny little show that I started um, around 2019. Uh, funny story about that before I actually show you, tell y'all what the actual show is about. Um, so me and my cousin um, Spaz, shout out my boy Spaz, we was smoking on the porch and a little fly just came out and just bounced off my face on some weird shit. Mm-mm. And we was just making jokes. He was like, yo, that shit just did, did a whole kickflip off your face. And then we, I was like, yo, that'd be a funny ass animation. He was like, nah, you should do that. So after we finished smoking and shit, I went upstairs and I made the first episode, the little pilot episode, and it went a little viral. I ain't gonna lie, that shit got like 40,000 views in like the first Ooh, week. Sheesh. So I was like, oh damn, people really want this. So I tried to turn it into an actual like series, like a show. So now I made it a show about these two flies named Mac and Darius. And Mac is like a deadbeat dad kind of kind of fly. He mm-hmm. has 50 kids with his wifey Fly Asia. <laughs> and he just don't want to take care of them kids. He's really just like very <laughs> irresponsible. But he learns through the adventures that they go through to be more caring for his wife and his kids. Oh. And they go through a lot of uh, funny, wacky adventures. They get lost by getting drunk after, t- after he finds out that he's having these 50 kids. Mm-hmm. And it's just a journey of them coming back, you know, dealing with humans, dealing with other bugs that's trying to kill them in the food chain mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a very, very funny, well-developed show that I'm working on right now. I have season one out now on my YouTube Period. and uh, on my website, www kidflash.com and season two is currently in the works um actually koe is one of the voice actors she plays mesquina uh which i is definitely the, did read that yeah she's definitely one of the um antagonists of the show she's uh <laughs> i don't want to spoil too much but basically they get into a little love affair because okay you know what I'm saying she sucked his blood mm, that's it, tea you know what i'm saying so it's kind of like cheating in the bug world you know what i'm saying mm. so it's just like yeah and now he's trying to keep that from his mistress, mm-hmm. and, you know, keep the mistress hidden and all that. So it's just like a whole love triangle that I'm going to uh, showcase in the second season. So 
One thing I love is how digestible it is. Mm-hmm. I feel like I was literally watching them at work and I was like really tuned in. And like, it was Thank like you. before I knew it, it was over. And I was like, this was very short, sweet to mm-hmm. the point. And I heard on an interview, you said that the reason that they're so short is because you are a one man band. I am. People, he is giving Kiki Palmer, it is written, produced, voiced by, he drew it, like mm-hmm. he's doing the music. So, what is that process like? Walk us through making an entire cartoon as a a one man band. So basically, it starts off with the episode story. I need to know what is happening from start to middle to end. Okay. And once I flesh that out, I create a script. Once the mm-hmm. script is solid, I send it out to the voice actors. For the most part, it's mostly me and Darius, or my other cousin uh, Dante, who is playing Darius. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are the main characters, so it's mostly interactions between us. So we handle most of the voice acting. And after the voice acting is done, I can now pinpoint what the characters are gonna say. Mm-hmm. So now that I know um, what they're gonna say, I storyboard it out, which okay. means you basically like scene by scene show what's gonna happen how it goes from that start to end Mm -hmm. and then from there once i know how it's gonna go like i map it out from the storyboard i draw the scenes out i animate the scenes and then i uh animate i do what they call um vocal syncing okay so that means you sync the the lips the lip syncing to the voices so now whatever we say i have to make them talk that and express that and stuff like that um so that's part of the whole animation process and then after that it's just editing, and then once the editing is done, it's out. Oh, it's out. It's so, out. do you like drawing people more, or do you like drawing objects slash animals more? Um, it's actually kind of a tie between both because I actually prefer drawing like like animals and cartoon things a lot of bit, uh, a little bit more because it's a lot quicker and easier for me to draw. Because mm-hmm. when you're doing like realism and like humans and stuff like that, you kind of gotta like attribute to their faces and their, mm. their characteristics or their like physical appearance because if you don't like we and me and, and me and my girl was just actually talking about this too like if you do certain things like you make the eyes a little too low or a little too small or the nose a little too big mm-hmm. or the lips a little you know off it'll throw the whole face off and it won't mm. look like that person so it's a very tedious process when you're working on a, a human face versus like a cartoon fly that just got big circles for eyes right. and like a circle body so yeah I would say I prefer doing like cartoons and like animals and stuff like that more because you can exaggerate those things. Whereas with you, with a human, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. So. Now, do you prefer to do cartoons or like musical artwork? Um, cartoons. I, honestly, I'm not gonna lie. This is exclusive. I've never said this anywhere. Oh, I never wanted to do cover art. Never. Mm. As as good as I am at it, and as recognizable as my artwork is in the cover art scene and all the accolades I've got, mm-hmm. I never wanted to do it that. It just kind of fell into it your lap. It just fell into my lap because I had a, a, a my boy Tyon. Shout out my brother Tyon. That's my brother for life. He's the one who even got me in this lane to call myself Aww. a multi platinum cover artist. Um, if it wasn't for him introducing me to Davies and his team, because mm. uh, they had a song. That's with, a heavy name to drop. Yeah, they, they had a song <laughs> with uh, DJ EXO and. At the time, this guy named DJ Wavy, mm-hmm. uh, I think he goes by So Wavy right now. Um, and yeah, they had a song called Vacation. That was my first cover art I ever did. It was this uh, fall of 2017. Mm-hmm. I did that cover art and it literally made Hypebeats Magazine the same day I did it. Ooh. And then from there, just mad inquiry started coming in and shit like that. So Damn. if it wasn't for him putting me on to that, to that scene and this lifestyle, mm-hmm. I wouldn't even be me right now. It sure. sounds like it was in the cards to me. It That's was. fate. It, def- it definitely was. So, and I did that. I did that in class. I was in college at Pratt Institute at the time, and he called me in the middle of class. I was in art history, and I was just like, "I ain't doing shit in here right now. So, mm. might as well just knock it out." Took a couple hours, did it, and it was just my first real big pro- placement. And then from there, the names have just been getting bigger and better, and just the work has just evolved, and it's just like wow. Mm. Like, so I would say like. I never really wanted to do it, but because it became such a consistent thing, that's why yeah. I maintained it and why I kept doing it. But yeah. I always wanted to be an animator. I used to go to I, I, I used to go to college for animation. Okay. But unfortunately, I didn't finish college because the cover art business took off for me while right. I was in college. So I just left it alone. But animation was my passion from rip. I used to wake up early mornings and get my little bowl of tricks, watch Aww. some early morning cartoons. You feel me? And then. Just be like, yo, I'm gonna do this. I'm, I need to be doing this. This is gonna be me watching myself on right. TV. And ever since then, that's just been my passion, my drive. And I, I wake up every day drawing cartoon characters, new characters that no one has ever seen, my own characters, mm-hmm. and just bringing them to life. And that's just 
Oh, I love what that. I prefer. Thank you. Now, speaking of college, mm-hmm. so you did say you went and you left. Yeah. Um, I feel like there's been an ongoing conversation about how long college is going to be necessary. Now, in your specific field, I feel like mm-hmm. it's really interesting because your field has a lot to do with technology and yeah. technology develops so quickly. It's like if you had learned something in 2017, mm-hmm. they might not even be using that technology to do what you're doing in 2023. So how important do you find college at this very moment? At this very moment for me or just in general? Both. But, all right. So for me specifically, I actually would want to go back to college. I actually would really? want to pursue my degree again because it's never not like a bad thing to have a degree because at the end of the day, it's like a safety net cushion for you, mm-hmm. regardless of what field you're in. Mm-hmm. And I feel like with me having that certified degree and learning a little bit extra than I might know right now, because I'm kind of going off just like partial college mm-hmm. and YouTube. Mm-hmm. So I feel like a full-fledged college degree would give me the leverage that I would need to like get in those doors that like so more on the business side kind of on the business side okay okay but right now because i'm already kind of established in this realm Mm -hmm. it's not necessary but i would just do it just not only for my own personal gain but just to get extra knowledge to kind of like pursue it in a different light you know what i'm saying get an extra angle on it um but i feel like in general though college is still important i feel like there's definitely a lot of different outlets to do it so it's Mm -hmm. not necessary to pay thousands of dollars to go to certain colleges because right. you can go to like online colleges and do it for right. a cheaper price but still get the same level of education right. so i would never not get an education always be teachable always remain humble to the point where you say no nah, i know this no you mm-hmm. don't know everything nobody knows everything so mm-hmm. i feel like college and schooling in general is very very important and yeah, people should still pursue that um just to elevate their mindset and elevate their 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 their, their like my, like their their brain, you know what I'm saying? Like get their get themselves a, a different light on certain things. So I definitely like agree. That. I think mm-hmm. that even in my job now, I work in corporate, mm-hmm. and like the work that I'm doing is not necessarily hard. But I always tell like I tell like my younger cousins like just get the paper because yeah. the paper just affords you to do so much Absolutely. that you just like you said the rooms that you get in is a little different. Mm-hmm. So if you want to do it, definitely do it. Now, another field you are going into, yeah. man of many, many hats, tattooing. <laughs> what the hell is this? When did we decide that we wanted to tattoo? Um, like, what's going on with that? Tattooing was actually a, a big thing. A lot of people have been telling me for years, ever since like my cover art thing started popping off, Like a lot of people was like, yo, bro, the moment you do tattoos, let me know. I'm getting it. And I'm like, you know, it's kind of like just something I was kind of like hit or miss with because I was like, damn, I don't want to fuck nobody's skin up. I don't want to exactly. give nobody no, you know what I'm saying? It's very delicate work. Exactly. But after months and honestly years of research and everything, I finally took the leap. Uh, my girl is actually the real credit I have to give for pushing me over the edge to get that started. Period. So shout out Zuri for me. Um, she the real reason why I really wanted to start doing this tattoo thing because she just sees me every day drawing and just creating and stuff like that. And she's like, yo, babe, you got to. like, mm-hmm. it's, it's like inevitable. Like, you have to do that. You would make mad money doing that. Definitely. So, I was like, fuck it, I do it. And you know what's funny? I put that poll up like yesterday and I got a lot of hits. A lot of people was like, yo, bro, do it. Even Sleepy Hollow, shout out my boy Sleepy. He just tapped in like today before we oh, got wow. here. It's like, yo, bro, let me see what you got going on. But I, I fuck with you, Tayshia. Like, so you feel me? It's in the works. It's definitely going to happen this summer. And I feel like mm, it's that's good. quick. Yeah, it's, you, cause it's June. You already know, man. Kid Flash in the building. I gotta move quick. Flash. They don't so. call him Flash for no reason. You did. So. Okay. So what else is coming up from Kid Flash? Um, just season two of the Flies. That's number one priority right now. Um, tattooing. That's another adventure that I'm doing. I'm also producing. I got a couple hits in the tuck right now. I can't speak hits, on. But not songs. Hits. hits. You feel me? We don't make okay. songs. We make hits over there. So I got a couple hits with a couple of big, big names right now. I don't even want to name drop just yet. Okay. But, you know, a lot of that is in the work in the producing realm. Um, as far as my own music, I'm just going to release a For Fun EP just because, you know, I, I don't take music like OD serious. Mm-hmm. I do take it serious in the sense of like I want it to sound quality. I want it to be mm-hmm. done right. But it's just something I do as a hobby. That's You're not fun. trying to be Jay Z. Yeah, I'm not trying to be a rapper. Yeah, or yeah. This. Like my main focus is an animation and artwork. But I just do music because I know I can do it and I know I'm nice at it. So yeah. might as well. 
but I got an EP dropping soon. Um, no date yet, but we we just working on it just to make sure the music is quality. And then yeah, just other dope artwork, getting more plaques, getting more you know artwork done, and just living life, enjoying my life with my girlfriend, and just having fun. Period. Sounds That's like it. a great life to me. Amazing. We love to see it. Well, yeah. thank you for coming. I appreciate you for having K me. K Flash, Laura K, talking to town. We outside. Yeah.